All right. Taking y'all back through the time machine to 1988, November the 7th. What was going on during those times? I'll tell you what was going on. I was in 8th grade. Sugar Ray Leonard was going to pull off one of the most criminal things ever done in boxing. He was going to fight for two different world championships and two different weight classes. That is absolutely correct. Sugar Ray Leonard, Donnie Lalonde fight. Now, this was so controversial because no one ever seen this. Donnie Lalon was the champion at 175 pounds, which is, you know, I'm sorry. Oof. Light heavyweight. So, anyway, going through the motions, he decides that it would be in his best interest to have two weigh-ins so they could fight for the super middleweight title and the light heavyweight title. Now I'm quite sure you you know the history of this. They did two weigh-ins. But think about it. Donnie Lalon is the light heavyweight champion. This had never been done before. So what happened was They decided to do two weigh-ins to represent two belts. And they had one at 168 and then one at 175. Sugar Ray Leonard, who was a natural welterweight, well, built middleweight, it's easy for him to make 168 and then go and add on a couple of extra pounds. For Donnie Lalonde, he has to go all the way down the list. Get all the way to 168 and say, okay, I made 168. And here's what people didn't know. He was going to be fined $1 million per pound what he was over. So Mayweather thing, that wasn't the first time that it ever came up. We may assume that it was, but it was absolutely not. The first time it was presented was during this criminal fight. And Gil Clancy, you know, rest in peace, Gil was the first one to say that, hey, this here is a crime. There's no way at that weight class that this could take place. But no one was trying to hear it at the time. And since the super middleweight title didn't exist for the WBC, they created a title during this fight here today. And once they did that, they gave the belt to the winner of this fight was going to represent the super middleweight division which neither of them were going to fight in anymore <laughs> uh, well Donnie Lalonde wasn't so Sugar Ray just found a way to criminally get two world titles and two different weight classes in one night and of course he negotiates all the advantages and paranoid that they weren't going to make 168 pounds, Donnie Lalonde was driven into the ground with extra training on top of training on top of training. Because I think he had oh, Tommy Gallagher was his trainer at that time. The big dude, Tommy. And then Tommy was all nervous. Like, we got to keep running you. We got to keep running you and keep running you and keep running you. And then Sugar Ray Leonard Whew. 
Ooh, I'm sorry about that. Sugar Ray Leonard decides that this is the best outcome for him in this fight here. Meaning that this is the best opportunity for him to win the tight fight against Donnie Lalonde. Donnie Lalonde was way too big for Ray Leonard. He was about 6'4". <laughs> You know, naturally, 190 some pounder. You know, he's got a sweat down and he's had a devastating right hand. But the knock on him is that he wouldn't jab. Now, going into this fight, I never saw the fight live. Let me repeat, never saw the fight live. Saw it on the replay on HBO and I recorded the fight. I have watched this fight probably more times than probably you can even imagine I watched this fight over and over and over and over again since 8th grade I will always go back I enjoyed that fight so much that I would always go back and check out that fight and go throw it on that's how much I love boxing that I saw so many different things in the fight but at the time didn't know what was going on behind the scenes that brought it to the forefront. And here's my prime example. Sugar Ray Leonard in the fight was being dominated in the earlier rounds. The line is popping the jab in his face. Everything's working to his advantage. He's hurting Ray Leonard. And it's looking just like how we thought it would go. Ray Leonard suffers his first cut in boxing history in this fight and things are not going his way and for the first time Ray is not you know he, he's not feeling the way he should have felt going into this fight with his dominance he's not feeling as if you know this is what he wants to do because what Ray was going to do was retire after the Hagler fight. And what people didn't know is that after the Hagler fight, he didn't have another big fight on the table. He went back to partying and messing around and not really taking boxing serious again. Then, here it is, after a year later, he comes back. With this super middleweight title and this light heavyweight title and this big event, Caesars opened up some more money and got him right back out there. And here they go again. You know, it's like, come on. I just think this was like one of the telling fights in boxing history. Because. Sugar Ray Leonard used to do the broadcasting for HBO. And I used to keep him around the fight to keep his juices flowing. But why he was indecisive on what he was going to do. With that being said, you had... Uh, who was that? They used to train Kevin Rooney. Kevin Rooney was doing the fill-in for Sugar Ray Leonard when Ray Leonard was fighting the line in this fight. And it is the most interesting thing in the world to see. And it is the funniest thing to see. Because Kevin Rooney hated on Sugar Ray Leonard the entire fight on purpose. Because he can stand the way Ray Leonard bashed. My, for y'all who didn't know, Ray Leonard used to bash and critique Mike Tyson's fights. And just tell you everything negative about Mike Tyson and all of his fights when he used to broadcast them. Ray Leonard be sitting there saying this and that, but yeah, but Mike is really not doing this. Mike's really not doing that. If this, if the opponent would just do this to Mike and this and that, you know, he will always have something negative to say about Mike Tyson. So a lot of people who really was fooled in the public did not understand that those two were not really seeing eye to eye like that. And Kevin Rooney couldn't stand Ray Leonard because of it. So when he commentated this fight, it was the funniest thing in history because he was deliberately 
rooting for Donnie Lalonde and hating on Sugar Ray Leonard. And for y'all pleasure, I'm going to send the link to the video in the description box. Click it. Watch that fight. Listen to what I'm telling you. You're going to enjoy it. Because it's a good half. The first half has been completely dominated by Lalonde. Then you see his fatigue start to kick in and just tear him up. And he's so tired and he can't keep up with this pace. And he's gassing out because he spent so much time trying to make weight. But in 88, we didn't know about all this. We didn't know anything about what was going on. We didn't know about the contracts. We didn't know any of this information. We were just being fed the fight. And there you have it. But now you can go back and research and talk to the people involved. And now you know, like, man, like, this was all going on behind the scenes? You know, it's crazy. It is really crazy. But I'm just taking you back through history. Just thinking about one of my favorite fights. And that was one of them. It was captivatedly ended in like the ninth round when Ray Leonard landed one of the best one-two punches in combination history. And Donnie Lalonde realized how strong Ray Leonard is. Plus he's fatigued, but Ray Leonard was pretty strong. And that's, that was his advantage over people. Is Ray, Ray had pop on some of his punches. And he wasn't as weak as a lot of people thought and assumed that he was. And that was his advantage. You know, Thomas Hearns is a, a devastating puncher when he catches you on the end of your shots. But Ray Leonard was strong. And, you know, Hearns had to respect that in their second fight. You know, he was always leery he could do what he wanted to do with Ray. But the incoming of what Ray Leonard can throw back could hurt Tommy. And once Tommy realized that, he, he knew he had to change it up. He couldn't be too proud to tie up Sugar Ray Leonard. In that fight, he didn't want to tie up Ray Leonard, but he should have. And now I'm going on and on and on. But I'm out.